What is up everybody? Welcome back to Case Digital. In today's video, we're going to be answering the question of how to read a text file in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. Welcome back to Case Digital. Like I mentioned, this video, we're talking about how to read in a text file in Python. And in particular, I want to show you two different ways that you can go about reading in um, a text file and the things that you can do with it. So before we get started, I went ahead and I created this text file that just says subscribe to Case Digital. You learn about Python, software development, and cool things with programming. If there are any misspellings in there, I just suck at spelling. So just disregard those but essentially um, I took this text file and placed this text file in the same folder as that of my Python file right here so you can see I have other Python files that I have in here from other tutorials um, so you can go check those out on my github page which I should have linked below in this video or um, go check out the other videos that I have um, but essentially this text file is right in the same directory now in another video I'll show you how you can load in um, you know a text file that's in a random location from your um, you know from your Python Python file um, with some pathing stuff, but um, that is not the point of this video. Um, the point of this video is to show you how you can read these in and the things that you can do. So let's get started with method number one. Okay, so the basic way to read in a file, or especially any file, but in, in our case, particularly a text file, um, is to essentially do something is use the open operator or the open um, function where you can do so cur file is equal to open. And now what it's asking here is it's asking us to say, hey, bring in the file location, which this is just going to be a string, and then give it a mode. And you can do a bunch of other stuff, but essentially we're going to focus on the first two, giving it a file location and the mode, because um, that's really all we need. So I'm going to say dot slash, which this is just meaning the current directory. Um, you could also just essentially say my text file.txt um, and it'll just look in the current directory but I always like as best practice just to say hey I know it's in this location so just put it there um, so that's my file location and then I want to say I uh, give it a mode now there are several different modes that you can give and to read in a text file you want to give it the R mode so if you pass in an R like and this is showing you some modes that you can possibly put in but essentially R is the mode that we want and now that's it I can say from this this gives us a file I guess um, IO operator which allows us to say take this file and do stuff with it. So now say I just want to read the contents. I want the full length of that whole text that's in that file. I can say curve file and I want to say this. I want to say contents of the file is equal to curve file dot. Now you can see a bunch of things that pop up here. Now this is an IDE. This allows you to see a bunch of different things that you can do with this because this knows that it's returning back this. Um, yeah, so this this you're returning back in our case, it's going to return back a file IO operator or class. And so in this side, this class of you can do a bunch of different things. And we just want to get the text content out of the file and into our program to mess with. Right. So I can just say read. Now with that, I can go ahead and I can say print contents, contents, there it is. So I can say print contents and now as best practice in anything with programming, when you open something, you wanna make sure it closes. Now Python does a great job of helping with memory management. You don't have to really worry about that. That's more of an advanced thing, but like in other languages, in other programming languages, if you don't close things, bad things can happen. Um, so in our case, just to see, keep with that current practice, um, we're gonna do current file dot close. Now that means that once you close, you can't really use this file operator again without doing this open. So basically you want to do the close later on um, when, when you're knowing that you're, getting, you're done with it and you're done getting everything out. Um, so I can do this and I can go down here I can run this file and there it is. I just printed out the contents of the text file, which is this subscribe to case digital. And you can see it's right there in the exact same format and everything that it came out in. Um, and that's essentially the first method on how you can um, read in a text file in Python. Hey, I just want to jump in real quick, say thank you so much for watching the video so far. If it's providing you value, please click that like button below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so we can learn more about software development and programming. And well, speaking of programming, let's get right back to it. Okay, so method number two is very similar to that of method number one, but it's just kind of I would say more of the more of the Pythonic way or more of the way I've seen a lot of people who've developed in Python do things is they're using the with operator. Now this with operator, and you're just going to do the exact same thing to be honest. Um, you're going to say with open, give it that, and I'm going to say as, and I'm going to say the current file, or I always like to call it a stream for whatever reason. You can do whatever you want, but basically this whole thing is going to handle this opening and closing, and it's 
it's going to assign the file IO class, or in this case, it's saying it's a text IO wrapper, as this variable right here. So I can do the exact same thing. I can say contents is equal um, to stream.read. Now, I'm going to do something different here. Here's the thing. So when you're reading in a file, there's many different things that you can do. Like you can read like a certain number of, um, like if you if I just did generally do read, I can tell it how many like bytes I want, or I think it's bytes or characters that I want to read. Like I can pass in a number and it'll only read that many like, you know, spots. But what if I only want the lines? I want to get a list out of all my lines. I can do something that's like read lines, read line. I can read a specific line or I can get all the lines. I can say, give me all the lines. And if I go ahead and I print this out, now I'm gonna do something that gives us a little divisor here. This is a nice little trick. So if you do a string, a string, if you wanna say, I want this whole thing, like, you know, a bunch of characters long, it treats it as kind of like a list. And so you can say, hey, times it by 80, and this will make duplicate this one item 80 times. So we're gonna make that so it gives us a little buffer between our method number one and our method number two. So that you can see the difference between the two. So if I come down here, reset this, so it clears our screen, I'm gonna hit up a couple times and rerun our file. And now if I pull this up, you'll see that our method number one right here essentially opened the file, got all, just read it, just gave us everything, right? And there it is. And now I put in our buffer line, boom, right there, which gives us our 80 characters long of string. And now the second part, I read in the exact same file, I redid it because I'm using this new method with width because now look, the difference in method number one, I was using open and then I closed it. Method number two, I just need width open and everything, once I escape out of here, like if I moved contents out to the same line as width, it's now closed that file stream for us. And so contents, is is going to be in there but our contents is going to be part of the earth contents will essentially be usable you know at that point because since we assigned everything to a, to a variable but look the difference so read lines read lines versus read reading is just giving us everything read lines is it made a list for us um where essentially right there so you can see everything essentially it made a list of all of, of all the lines in the in the string so look that became an item in the list an item in the list this line became an item in the list and so on and so forth but then you also know it added these special characters you know it added these new line characters and Essentially, that is just because this new line character is hidden to our eye and shows it tells the computer to write, you know, start writing on line two. And so essentially, if you don't want the new line characters, you can essentially do something where since we know that this is a list, um, I'm going to kind of show you a little trick that you can do to remove all new lines. Um, and that's by I can say contents. Oops. It's going to equal to, and I'm going to do list comprehension here. I know this might be a little advanced, but it's really easy in this case. So what this is going to do is I'm going to say my um, my value dot strip because I know it's going to be a string, and you'll see what this strip does here in a sec. For value or val in contents. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take this contents list right here. It's going to loop through each one of them, and every time it gets a value, it's going to append it to this outer list that I have, and it's going to strip it. It's going to apply strip. What strip should essentially just take off that new line. So if we re rerun this, you should see, boom, no new line characters right there. How amazing is that? Again, this is the same as doing new contents for val in contents new contents dot append val dot strip. And then we gotta rent this guy out. And there you have it, folks. Those are the two methods that you can use right here, method number one and method number two, that you can essentially use to read in a text file in Python. Um, I prefer method number two because it handles this close for me. Like if I forget, I know I'm covered with this. As soon as I come out to this new line and I start saying, like if I come out here and say, Sub subscribe, like as soon as I come out here to this line, I know that I'm safe. Like I know that that has already closed it for me. So what I would say is go try this. Go try this on the any programs that you're doing, trying to read in text you know, from like say a book and create your own audiobook or something like that. Um, and that might be a fun project to do later on. But try these out. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know in the comments below. If you found value, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to Case Digital because this is where we're learning about Python, software development, programming, and just fun and cool things in general. So until next time, keep on programming.